Hi folks, it's CNB time and we've got the brand new Honda Amaze yet again on the program. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. Yes, the Amaze has now been launched. We've got the details on pricing, etc. coming your way. The 1.5 litre iDTEC engine, well that's going to be the big news for Honda. Not just the driver of sales for this model, but perhaps a number of models that will come from Honda in the near future. So we'll talk about that strategy with uh, the CEO of the company in a little while from now, but let's uh, quickly get on to another scorcher. This is the V10 version of the uh, all new Audi R8. We had some fun with it at the Buddh International Circuit a few days ago. Being on a racetrack is all about high speed, exhilaration and sheer excitement. Driving in the fast lane not only tests the mean machines, but it also tests one's own driving skills. And what's more, given the crazy Indian road conditions, being on a racetrack also means no out-of-turn speed breakers, no one coming at you from the opposite direction on the wrong side, no one carelessly cutting across. Well, all that aside, being on a racetrack also means the chance to usually drive an automobile that's built for it. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get behind the wheel and test drive the latest version of the Audi R8. The facelift came in January and now it's gone plus. That's the Audi R8 Plus with the tweaked V10 Monster powering it. We have of course showcased the V8 earlier on the car and bike show, haven't we? The V10 comes packed with even more power and punch. Apart from the facelift that the V10 variant has been given, the new 5.2-litre engine now develops 550 bhp and 540 nm of torque. You can think about lots of uh, stuff about uh, technical specifications of this car, but the only thing I remember after driving this, uh, while uh, whatever two or three laps I did, the uh, only thing I remember is uh, the kind of uh, braking I did and the kind of handling it showed when it was going into the corner because I was braking late and the kind of confidence it was giving me was uh, phenomenal. So now it's time to unleash all this power onto the F1 track. So what's different in the V10 Plus from its earlier avatar? Well, the engine punches out an extra 25 bhp of power and the car is also much lighter than before. It uses ultra-light forged wheels and carbon ceramic brakes, which alone save about 2 kilos. The front panels are made of light carbon fibre, as are the rear diffuser and the R8's trademark side vents. It all adds up to shave 50 kilos off the curb weight of the standard R8 V10. The engine bay is also lined with carbon fibre. The car also has a new suspension which feels very nice and very pliant and the new carbon ceramic brakes deliver astounding stopping power. Audi says that the car goes from 0 to 100 in 3.5 seconds and has a top speed of 317 km per hour. Audi R8 and uh, BIC F1 track is not a new experience for me but uh, this time Audi has already announced that new R8 which is uh, Audi R8 Plus with V10 engine is the fastest production car on BIC so I know that this experience is going to be very, very different. Both Kranti and Siddharth took turns getting this beast out onto the track. The R8 was always responsive, but what gives the car a great road manner is its ease of use, which, by the way, only seems to have gotten better, which is why it is not surprising that a lot of R8 buyers the world over use this as their everyday car as well, not just one for leisure on the weekends. After a few laps, the boys decided to pull into the pits, so if that didn't get your heart pumping, the car's price tag definitely will. The new Audi R8 V10 Plus is priced at 2 crore 6 lakh rupees ex showroom. Oh sorry, we mean only 2 crore 6 lakh rupees. Now the Brio may well have been that uh, small car, very competitively priced offering from Honda, but the company says it has higher hopes. From the Amaze, it expects larger volumes and the overall strategy is going to be very different going forward. It's not just this car, it's also diesel as a general strategy, remember. We got all of this from uh, the company's president and CEO, Mr. Kanayama, who uh, in his very first major television interview to uh, any Indian news channel, spoke exclusively to NDTV right after the launch of the Amaze. Yes, because uh, India is uh, such an important market strategically for Honda, uh, because the, we, Honda, believe is in the high potentiality of this market. And uh, although the situation, uh, the market situation is not so good at present, but uh, we are confident that it will pick up in due course. 
So India was one of the, or, or perhaps the focus market when it came to this product. Yes. Okay, because uh, we're talking about the development going back to the time where even the Brio was being developed. So it's not as if this happened last year. Mm. So right from then, India has been the clear sort of focus for uh, even the R&D. Yes, this model? of course. Not only R&D, but as Honda, India is a very strategically important market. How important is it then also for you to uh, cement your position in those segments? Because for the city, we've seen, you know, it's been one of the most popular products, perhaps of all time in our market. But uh, obviously not having a diesel has hurt you. So how important is it for you to quickly bring in that kind of a model, uh, bring in like a, maybe a diesel jazz or, of course, then, like you said, the UV as well? Well, uh, you see, the earlier launch will be important. However, the, we need uh, a minute development a study of the car itself to keep the car safe and most efficient in any case. Therefore, uh, when we will launch those models, when we think, yes, this is the best. Now, Kanare san also shared with me that he doesn't completely rule out the possibility of an automatic diesel model as well, but not in the short term. The country or the market perhaps not quite ready for that just yet. So react to the prices, react to everything that we've told you about the Amaze and any questions you may have still on the model. Send all of that in. You know how to get in touch with me. I will see you on the other side of a very short break right here on CNB.
its amazingly spacious interiors, the Honda brand name, and then the promise of high mileage. Those are the USPs the company believes will help drive sales for the all-new Amaze. Welcome back to CNB. We move away from the Honda car now and uh, its spacious interiors. And let's talk a little bit about another car that really did amaze us with its interiors. That, of course, is the Sunny from Nissan. Remember, when it first drove in, people couldn't believe the kind of legroom you've got in the rear. Now, you've got the new CVT that's driving in right after the Scala CVT drove in. My colleague Bala has had the chance to drive both cars and now he has the review for you of the new Sunny CVT. Close on the heels of Renault launching the Scala Automatic, Nissan is all set to launch this, the Sunny Automatic, with a similar Xtronic CVT engine. After all, it's Nissan that owns the Xtronic CVT technology, really. When we drove the Scala just a few months back, uh, it did fairly well on all counts, good performance, especially smooth acceleration all through both in city as well as on the highway. Let's see if the Sunny can match up to this or even maybe do better. Yes, the rebadged twin Scala and Sunny, now armed with the Xtronic CVTs, are set to prove a point in the Indian car market, which has so far seen only conventional automatic gearboxes. While the Scala is seen as the most sporty of the two, the Sunny is seen positioned for owners looking for a spacious yet reliable car. The car really comes to life once we ditch the city traffic and hit the East Coast Road Highway outside Chennai. The CVT gearbox requires no extra push to overtake and even though they are mechanically similar, the Scala CVT hadn't seen as effortless. But that could well be put down to the traffic conditions on the day. But there is one big downside. When you do floor it, the car gets really noisy. And yes, even with the windows up, the noise level is a little unsettling. But what was reassuring was the steady ride you get on the Sunny with its responsive steering. Overall, we have to say it's a comfortable cabin too. But remember, unlike a conventional gearbox, the CVT takes some time to get used to. Especially the tug you feel when the gears change. The Sunny CVT also comes in two drive modes, low gear mode for hilly and steep incline driving conditions and then the sports mode for a boost in acceleration. I really have to admit that I'm slowly becoming a fan of the CVT gearbox, having driven the Scala automatic recently and now the Sunny automatic, uh, largely thanks to the smooth acceleration that you see in both low and high speeds. with absolutely zero shift shocks that you normally associate to in automatic cars. Um, also the big other advantage is that the car seems to really respond well to the driver and kind of understands the optimum power required at chock block city traffic coupled with the improved fuel efficiency and the fantastic drivability Nissan really believes that the CVT is really suited for Indian roads. Under the hood, the Sunny stays the same with a 1.5-litre four-cylinder unit generating 134 newton meters of torque. What is impressive is the fuel efficiency claimed by Nissan at 17.97 kilometers to the litre. Although surprisingly a whole kilometer lower 
than what Renault claims on the Scala CVT. The only noticeable difference on the Scala is on the outside. And that is, if you look close enough, is the gleaming Extronic CVT badge on the sunny rear. Nissan will launch the Sunny Automatic only in the XL mid variant, but is keeping their options open depending on demand and plans to launch it even in the high end XV segment as well. But what really is exciting is that the CVT will soon get on the micro platform as well and will really make things interesting in the small car automatic segment. Expect Nissan to price the Sunny CVT aggressively at around 8.5 lakh rupees, well below the Scala CVT at 9 lakh rupees ex showroom Delhi, making the Scala just a little bit more pricier. Having tasted success with the Sunny Diesel, Nissan is not really ruling out a diesel automatic but that plan could well just be on paper for now. And for starters, Nissan hopes the CVT gearbox with high fuel efficiency on the petrol is lapped up by new car buyers looking to drive into the automatic segment. So more and more automatics driving into the market, good sign for those of you who want to buy an automatic at some point because you know what, the more of them that sell, the cheaper they get. In fact, Honda tells me that uh, when it comes to its Brio sales, 20% of those sales are now automatic models. So uh, well, you got another CVT now from Nissan. So react to that, react to everything else on the program as always, I look for your feedback. I'm going to leave you now with a quick look at the annual NDTV Business Leadership Awards. Don't worry, we're only going to stick to the automobile space and uh, just share with you the big winners on that night. Please wear your seat belts, please wear your helmets. I'll see you next week. The business leader, four wheelers, Mahindra and Mahindra. The business leader and two wheelers, Hero Motor Corp.